Good afternoon. This is Dr. Havens continuing the week one lecture for the leadership course. For the next few minutes, we're going to focus on chapter two of the textbook, Professional Ethics and Values. Some of the objectives we're going to look at quickly are um, difference between laws and ethics. We will talk about relationships between our personal ethics and also our professional ethics as nurses. We will talk briefly about ethical principles as we apply them to professional issues. We will focus on the effect of, that organizations have on um, values in our nursing practice. We will identify an ethical value in the clinical setting, and we shall also discuss some current ethical issues that are going on in healthcare. In order to understand biomedical and nursing ethics, we need to briefly review some basic concepts such as values and belief systems and morality. Our values could be described as judgments that we make about the importance of characteristics, ideas, theories, and things in the world. We incorporate our values as part of our worldview and our overall conscience, and our values provide a framework or frame of reference that guide us and assist us in um, helping people. In so our value system is a group of related values. This is influenced by our family, our community, our culture, our education, the um, communities that we associate ourselves with, such as churches and other organizations. And this influences what's important to us in the world. In some families, um, successfulness and competition is, is valued. In other people, they may value kindness and altruism more. It just depends. There are different categories of values. There are our personal values that influence what we consider to be most important in our private life, such as strong family ties, saving money, taking care of others, loving our children, that kind of thing. And then professional values are qualities that are embraced and adhered to by a professional group, such as registered nurses. These include autonomy, integrity, telling the truth, and um, other concepts such as these. So our values are developed over time through continual reinforcement. Usually they come from real world experience, lived experiences, and not so much what we read in a book, although we could learn values through our education. Um, our values can be influenced, as I said before, by our culture or societal norms. Children learn by watching what their friends do, their parents, their grandparents, religious leaders, community leaders. Um, People often make great demands on themselves to uphold certain values um, because it's important to their parents or some other people that they love or hold dear, even at great personal cost. Our values change over time based on our lived experience and also by our level of maturity. Our choices are in, in, heavily influenced by our values. Um, and these are decisions that we have to make. For instance, what political party do we want to affiliate with? Are we more democratic or more Republican, more independent, more libertarian? Do we value purchasing organic food for the family or are we fine with regular produce? Um, what type of healthcare services? Do we vaccinate or not vaccinate our children? What do we spend our money on? How do we spend our time? What do we do for entertainment? Um, what do we do to give back to the community? That kind of thing. So the way that people choose friends, make their financial decisions and pursue a career, a career are all influenced by their values. Then belief systems are um, an organized way of thinking about the way that people think about the world and the universe. This is what we do inside our head to explain good and evil, health and illness, life and death, and so forth. This could be intertwined with our spirituality or our religious beliefs and practices as well. People use these systems to include an ethical code that specifies appropriate behavior. How do we act when we're with our family? How do, be, how do we behave when we're in the community? How do we behave when we're on our job? 
this can also be influenced by our religion or by other values. Um, and then there are a lot of technological advances that influence our belief system in healthcare. Um, a lot of this has to do with advanced directives. Does the patient want to do not resuscitate order? Does the patient want to be kept alive on um, life-saving machines, even if they're no longer conscious and they are not able to recognize their family and so on and so forth. And this is actually one of the bigger biomedical um, and bioethical dilemmas of our time. So ethics is that part of overall philosophy that deals with right and wrong and also what motivates human behavior. And then bioethics um, applies ethical principles to life and death. And the implication is that judgments can be made about the rightness or wrongness or goodness of basic health care and life-saving practices. Some of the ethical principles that are really important to nurses have to do with patient autonomy, justice, especially social justice that we'll talk about in a minute, the concept of co patient confidentiality, veracity or truth telling and being honest, and then professional and personal accountability. So patient autonomy means the ability of this patient or client to make decisions for themselves. Um, the ethical principle around um, nursing has to do with being an advocate for client autonomy. Um, if the patient is refusing a blood transfusion based on religious principles, if they do not want a vaccine, if they choose not to go undergo chemotherapy for a malignancy or that kind of thing. Um, nurses believe in supporting the patient's autonomy, even though this might not be a choice that we would make for ourselves. And this is often something that nurses struggle with. Um, but we don't want to be the one to try to enforce our own principles and beliefs and values on the patient because as a profession, we do support client autonomy. The ethical principle of justice is an important one in nursing practice, um, and it requires us to treat every person equally regardless of race, color, creed, ethnicity, social standing, sexual orientation, anything of this nature. Um, this also applies in both work and educational settings as a student. So based on this principle, we treat all clients equally and are judged by the same criteria. The ethical principle of confidentiality is one that nurses know well. This goes along with um, HIPAA law. This is also an ethical as well as a legal issue. Um, sharing information about a client can be a breach of confidentiality. Um, if the situation doesn't warrant it, this is especially complex in today's electronic environment with all the technology going on and being sensitive, you know, about passwords and who can see computer screens and who has access to medical records and that kind of thing. So um, patient confidentiality is an ethical principle that we should be aware of when we're working um, with clients in client care at all times. Veracity is the ethical principle that requires professional nurses to be truthful. Truth is fundamental to building a trusting relationship with a client and a family. Um, violating this principle would be um, defined as intentionally deceiving or misleading a patient. Also, deliberately omitting a part of a truth can be construed as deception and would violate the ethical principle of veracity or truthfulness. So this often creates ethical dilemmas in nursing. Um, some ethicists believe that it's never appropriate to deceive another individual. So professional accountability, uh, accountability excuse me, is um, linked to truth telling and also loyalty and accepting responsibility for one's action. Nurses are accountable to the clients and also to our nursing colleagues and to our employer. When we provide patient care, we are responsible for our actions, whether they were good or whether they were bad. If something was not done 
Um, you don't want to chart it and then tell a colleague that you did. The um, concept of the standard of care evolves around the principle of accountability. Um, if we didn't do it, please be honest about that. Let someone know so that we can get it taken care of. In the long run, that will preserve trust with your colleagues and it's the better thing to do. Um, organizations are also accountable for patient care and the action of all of their personnel. So we are professionally accountable to our employers for upholding the standard of care. Let's talk for just a minute about the code of ethics. This is written by the American Nurses Association and can be found at the link www.nursingworld.org. Um, it gets updated periodically, so it's good to check back and, and review it. But this is a formal statement of ethical behavior for nurses as a group. Um, why do ethical codes change? Well, because they can reflect the value of our profession and um, the culture and society in which we're working. And changes do happen over time, especially in recent years related to technology. So. Um, just be aware that we do have a code of ethics and that it's good to review this periodically. And it's all about veracity and accountability and justice and the things that we've talked about in the last few minutes. So um, nursing ethics also focuses on the needs of nurses and the way that we're treated by our employers and also on our experiences. Our relationships with others are at the center of nursing ethics. Um, the ethical principles that guide the nursing profession are rooted in the science of healthcare, what we call evidence-based practice, and also in um, the field of philosophy. Nursing ethics deals with the experiences and the needs of nurses and also with their perception of these experiences. Sometimes nurses face ethical dilemmas um, in clinical practice on the nursing units. Sometimes when nurses are put in situations where we feel that we have difficulty practicing our highest ethical principles, this can be called moral suffering because it creates feelings of frustration and anger and um, sometimes not knowing what to do. Um, some of this can come from when there's, maybe when you feel that um, the employer should be doing other things for the clients, but maybe there's an issue of cost containment. This can be frustrating to nurses. This is probably not that infrequent or maybe patient loads. You feel that you could do so much more if you had fewer clients in your assignment. Um, I think this is a frequent kind of moral injury or um, an ethical dilemma that happens on nursing units. Ethical dilemmas happen a lot, both in our personal and professional lives, as we well know. Um, and this happens, it's an ethical dilemma anytime you have to make a choice between one or more ethical principles. Sometimes you feel like there's a better choice. Sometimes you feel like you're trying to choose between the lesser of two evils. And um, this is often, a, a, I think, a source of professional frustration for nurses. Some common ethical dilemmas are about um, who should pay for care. Should Medicare, Medicaid, the insurance companies pay if the person was injured and they were um, riding a motorcycle without a helmet? They didn't adhere to, you know, local or state helmet laws. They weren't responsible. Um, who should pay for um, emphysema and lung cancer, if the person was a smoker, if the person was a substance abuser, and um, just endless varieties of things that we could talk about. If a client smokes or is overweight or doesn't take medication as prescribed, then what is our ethical dilemma? This is um, actually another one of the bigger biomedical and bioethical dilemmas of our time currently. In addition to ethical dilemmas around patient care, there are also ethical issues in the nursing workplace around leadership and management sometime. Um, what to do when you notice an impaired coworker can come up sometimes. 
personal loyalties can cause um, division and problems sometimes about addressing concerns, what to do when the nurse feels like the employer is not um, providing precautions that would save them from being in personal jeopardy, what about if there's not enough PPE on the nursing units and you're taking care with, uh, of patients with um, an infectious disease, that kind of thing. Um, when you report things, make sure that you always follow your change of command and when you express your concerns. Um, and please do um, follow whatever formal process your organization has to report um, issues around nursing practice and patient safety concerns. So these are just a few common issues that we experience in the workplace related to moral and ethical dilemmas in throughout nursing. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you. There are some practical issues that we deal with as nurses and also some more philosophical issues that we have to decide um, within our own hearts, I think. Thank you for listening.